right? Because I'm gonna upload it. I'm gonna upload this class um, for you to have all the contents. Like I said, the rest of the classes that we have studied this week are in YouTube. Now, just let me share with you the pages we're gonna work today. And they are here. So page 70, 74. Today's topic, it's very interesting, believe it or not, it's very interesting. It sounds kind of complicated, but believe it, it's not. It is not, it's very, very simple. We're gonna read the definitions we have here in order to learn the concepts uh, in this lesson. They will so sound like abstract to you, but when we see the examples and everything, you will see that it's very, very simple. Let me see if I have volunteers here to read. Anybody wants to help me out reading here? Just one. Daniela Linette, can you unmute your microphone, Daniela? Or Nefi Yared? So you're not here, all right. Okay, Mariela Hernandez, can you unmute your mic? No. Katy Valeria? So nobody's here. Only your avatars. Okay, so you're not here. I'm not gonna ask you. Okay, uh, Josue, can you please read from here to here, please? Oh, sorry. I thought you were seeing from here to here. Uh -huh, thank you. So, uh, as you can listen here, a morphine is the most basic element is the smallest unit of meaning. So it can be a letter, it can be a set of letters, or sometimes it can be a word, but no matter how small it is, it contains meaning, it does. So like I said, uh, this topic sounds kind of abstract, but in the practice you will see that it's not complicated. So morphemes can be either root, root words or affixes. A root is like the core or nucleus of a word. It provides the gist of the word's meaning. An affix, an affix add more meaning to the root words. In one hand, we have the root words that are the core, the nucleus, the center of the meaning. And um, on the other hand, we have the affixes. We have different type of affixes. We have prefix and suffix as well. But 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 they uh, just provide extra, enrich, or modify the meaning of the root words. And we will see how it goes. Okay, let me see. We have two examples. Two examples of affixes: prefix and suffix. Let me see if I have volunteers now, or maybe not volunteers, but people who actually talk. Uh, Mauricio Quintanilla, can you unmute your microphone, Mauricio? Quintanilla, no. Marroquín Alexandra? I 
Adriana Camila Avelar. Yes, teacher. Oh, finally, someone is alive. Thank you, Adriana. Tell me, please, from here to here. No, wait, wait, wait. Um, okay. Uh, prefix alters the meaning of a root be began placed before the root. A uh, suffix, on the other hand, has the same effect, but is placed after the root. Thank you so much. So basically, a prefix and a suffix do the same thing. They have the same function in a word. They alter the meaning. The difference between those two is that the prefix goes at the end or is attached at the beginning, sorry, at the beginning of our root word. And the suffix is attached at the end of a root word. And we have some examples here of the prefixes and suffixes. So you can see that they are not complete words. They're just a set of letters or one letter in some cases, but they do contain meaning. They do contain meaning. They mean something. That's why they are considered the smallest units of meaning. And we can see some, some examples. We're gonna work with the exercises on the next page, but before, before to do that, I want you to take a look to a video, a video that I, I recorded last year about the same topic. And also uh, you will, you will be able to listen to the social emotional content. Last year, I was talking about responsibility and I think that this uh, value can be applied today with your responsibility of number one, being in the class and secondly, being active, active, participating in class. Because if you don't engage, you don't get engaged in the class, it means that you're not actually here. It doesn't matter if your avatar is here, but if you're not, if you're not actually there, so it's not worth it. So why you are here if you're not actually present? Okay, now listen to what I said last year about responsibility, and then we're gonna move to the explanation of the topic. If you have any questions, just let me know. So I want to share a couple of thoughts about responsibility. And they said like this, you can't escape the responsibility of tomorrow by giving it today. Well, um, to thrive as an adult, or in your case as teenagers, you need to take the responsibility of your actions. And especially when things go wrong, it is vital to build trust with others and learn from your mistakes. Remember that in the school you have a lot of assignments to do, and just because you decide to procrastinate today, that doesn't mean that in the future you will be a successful a student or a person in the society because uh, your record uh, is not going to be the same as you accomplish all of your tasks on due time. But there are a couple of tips or ways in order to become a more responsible person and I want to share uh, some of them with you. The first one is take responsibility of your thoughts your ideas, your feelings, your words, and your actions. That lead us to the second point, which is don't blame, stop blaming. So when it's your fault, uh, you have to uh, embrace it. It's your fault, it's not somebody else's fault. And uh, the third one is uh, stop complaining. When you say that the, the things are not okay because different situations that doesn't have to do anything with yourself, you are complaining and you are blaming at the same time. And the last one is the power of the intention. Use it for your own benefit. When you have the intention to do something, just do it. 
In this lesson, we are uh, using our book, Spotlight on Literature D, page 74. The topic is morphemes and affixes, uh, prefixes and suffixes. The first thing you gotta know is what morphemes are. And we can say that in linguistic, a morpheme is the smallest grammatical unit in a language. In other words, it is the smallest meaningful unit of language. So it is a letter or a set of letters, but they contain meaning. We have uh, among morphemes, the affixes. What is an affix? It's a set of letters, as I said before, that you attach to a root word to change or enrich its meaning. Among the affixes, we have a lot. We have infixes, prefixes, suffixes, but for this lesson, we're gonna study only prefixes and suffixes. In the definition of affixes, I mentioned that they are attached or they are added to root words. Uh, what are root words? It's a root word is a word or word part that can form the basis of new words through the addition of prefixes and suffixes. Root words can stand alone. So I'm gonna give you some examples. The word act, shape, happy, correct, and friend. So in your uh, class of uh, Spanish, you have a study a lot about prefixes and suffixes, but I'm going to refresh your memory about what these concepts are. And we can say that a prefix is an affix, which is placed before a root word. It goes before the root word and adding it to the beginning of one of the word changes it or into another word. And the same happens with a suffix. It is a letter, a group of letters added or attached at the end of a word, which makes a new word. So basically they have the same definition, but the difference between all of, between them is that the prefix goes before and the suffix goes at the end or after the root word. Okay, now that we have seen the theory of uh, root words and affixes, now it's time to put it into practice. We're gonna use root words act, shape, happy, correct, and friend. And we're going to attach some suffixes and prefixes, and you will see how uh, the meaning is changed. Uh, act, you add the suffix or. Now we had the verb, and then when you add the suffix, we have the noun. The person who acts is an actor. Shape, we add the suffix less. Less means without. So without shape. It means that doesn't have a specific form or shape. Happy. We add the prefix on. And on means no. No happy. Unhappy. We have the same with the word correct. If you add prefix in, we use the opposite. Because in also means no. It's not correct. It's incorrect. And you might be uh, wondering if we can add a prefix and a suffix to a root word. And it's correct, so it, it is right to do it. And we have the word friend. We add on, which means no, no friend. And the suffix ly, li. And we have the word unfriendly, which just means that it's in a no kind way, because remember that the L-Y ending means an adverb, or we make an adverb. Okay, now let's get a little bit closer to, to the concept and how these things work. Okay, uh, affixes, remember, they change the meaning, and every affix contains its own meaning. For example, the prefix re or re, it means again. So every time that you attach this word uh, or this prefix to a root word, it means that it has to be done again. And we have three examples here, three verbs. We have 
you play and do review, view again, replay, play again, redo, do again. Uh, other words that they contain the prefix is recall, reform, reconstruction, remake, renew, and return. In our next example, we have a very common suffix, which is S, R, E, S. And we use them for pluralization. When you uh, got the plural form of a noun, you, you can use S or E, S. And also in the conjugation or inflection of verbs specifically in the third person form in simple present affirmative sentences. In the examples, we have two pluralizations and two conjugations. In the uh, pluralization examples, we have cats and dogs. I hate cats, more than one cat. Dogs, the dogs over there look hungry. And then you have the inflection of verb jump and go jumps my niece jumps over the fence he goes to the office every day and remember that their person is she he and it okay uh, our next suffix or suffixes are er and or so the meaning of those are that they They turn a verb into a noun. So if you attach er or or to a verb, it uh, results a noun. Also, er is used for comparative adjectives. So examples: verb teach, act, drive, sing, and invent. So they are verbs, and teacher, actor, driver, singer, inventor. They are nouns. And the comparative adjectives: small, tall, thing. Ugly, noisy, smaller, taller, thinner, uglier, noisier. So I am taller than my brother. Uh, this box is smaller than yours. So this is when, when the, how comparisons work. And our last suffix is ly or li. Okay, if you attach this suffix to an adjective, it, it turns into an adverb. Slow, slowly, loud, loudly, sad, sadly, sudden, suddenly, peaceful, peacefully. So now at this point, you are very experts in adverbs because we studied them a couple of weeks ago. In this part of the class, I will present you a chart with three columns. In the first column, you will have the affix. Okay, we're going to move uh, to something else. Uh, this information is in, is in this video. I will continue to play in later because I want you to work in some exercise now. And let's work in the exercises on page 75. It's 75 in your books. So the first exercise is very simple. You have to divide each word into their root morphine and its affix. So you have to, you have to identify the root word and the affix, the prefix and the suffix. We can do this very fast. Uh, Josue, what is a prefix? The prefix in this word. Is the same that I use in the video. Anyone at home? Do you have any idea what the prefix to this word is? Abril Daniela? Can you unmute your microphone? Are you listening? or you're not listening. All right. Daniela Linet Escobar. I 
I think breathe this breath young and so Ah yeah, thank you, Levi. Yes, it's three. So is is Deborah the only uh, student here? And who was the other one who participated? And Valeri, no, it was Adriana, right? Was Adriana and 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 my dear Lopez lady. Debbie. So are they the only ones alive? Because otherwise I will proceed with only day two and Josue here. I'm here, teacher. Ah, this is Mariela. Ah, Mariela. Mariela, Mariela. Yeah, I know, I know that you're always here. Well, when you're here, you're here. When you are online, you are also a participative girl. Okay, that Mariela. What is the prefix here? This? This, very good. It's the opposite. When you don't like something, you dislike it. Uh, for preschool, prefix. Pre? Yeah, pre means before. It is before school. Preschool, kindergarten. Unequal? Um. Unequal is on, right? And on means, well, the meaning is no, right? No, no equal, unequal. Submarine? Sub. Sub. And sub means under. Under. That is the meaning of sub, submarine. But this one is simple. Uh, the suffix is in triple. Full, yes, thank you, Joshua. Breathless, suffix, less. Roses. The Blood. letter. Uh -huh. letter. Letter. Letter S. Yeah, pluralization, right? Rose, roses. Our talk. ED. Yeah, exactly, thank you. Is the conjugation of past tense regular verbs? It is. And teacher. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The person who performs the action, er or or teacher. So now there's an exercise. So you have to provide three examples for every word. You can provide three or more. It would be better if you provide more. I want to give you two minutes to think of the answers. One using the prefix miss, inter, and micro. Then we're going to switch to suffixes, ness, ly, and able. When miss means wrongly, when inter means between, and when micro means very small. Think of the words in two minutes, and then we come back to change your answers. Okay, let's listen the examples you have. Any any volunteer to give me examples with the prefix miss? Misery, mistake, and I I forget the other. Misery, <laughs> mistake, and I don't know all other. Okay, Debbie, when you don't pronounce when you don't pronounce the words correctly, how do you say? Miss? Miss pronoun? I yeah, don't know. Exactly, miss pronouns. When you don't understand well? Uh, I don't know, sorry. Understand? Under, misunderstand. Yeah. Yay, thank you, Debbie. Yeah, misunderstand, misbehave, misinterpret, mistake. Anyone uh, voluntarily with inter? International. International. Thank you, Mariela. Internet. Internet. Yes. 
international, internet, intercommunication, interlocutor, international, between the nations, right? International, etc. With micro. Micro. Microwave, microwave. Yeah, microwave. Mari, you were Maria, you were gonna say something? A microwave. A microwave, micro bus. Yeah, those are small buses, micro bus. Okay, you got it, ladies. You got it. Then we have letter D, the suffix ness. Well, uh, the meaning of this um, Suffixes are kind of complicated, they're kind of abstract. It's still quality. What the hell that means? So what you have to understand here is that the suffix turns adjectives into nouns. When you add the suffix to an adjective, it turns into a noun. Easy peasy. Um, examples? Loneliness. Loneliness, yes. Any other? Happiness. Happiness. The opposite of happiness? Sadness. Sadness. Yeah, you see sad? Sadness. Happy? Happiness. Lonely? Loneliness. That's great. Letter E, L-Y. When you attach L-Y, it indicates that an adjective turns into an adverb. And an adverb modifies an action, another adverb, and adjectives as well. Can you think of examples, my friends? You can use happy, you can use sad. Lovely. Lovely, uh, yeah, lovely, lovely. Happy. Lovely, happy, Worthy. happily, happily. The opposite? Sadly. Unfortunately, suddenly, slowly, rapidly, etc. Then able, I find uh, personally, I find uh, the adjectives that ends in able difficult to pronounce. When you are going to pronounce comfortable, that word that word makes me trouble. It really troubled me. Uh, understandable. Um, eatable, uh, comfortable, like I said, they're difficult words to pronounce. Uh, do we have more examples, ladies? Understandable. Uh -huh. I, I will not repeat it because I, I, I really have difficult time repeating the words ending in able. I don't know, it's a problem that I have in my tongue, maybe. Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Debbie. And now we have another exercise here. This one is more complex, but since you have the internet access, it's going to be very easy. So you're given here, well, first I would read the instruction. Uh, you have to read the definitions. We have one, two, three, five definitions here. They are indicated with letters. And we have a chart with prefixes, morphemes, and suffixes too. It's missing one here, because otherwise you will not complete the exercise successfully. It's missing ER, ER is missing. This is a problem with the book. Otherwise, you're not going to get the right word, ER. You have to pick a prefix, a root word, and a suffix to write words that best fit to the definitions here. I'm gonna do the first, so you can uh, have an idea what we're doing. Letter A, not able to be tolerated or endured. You have to choose one prefix. They got similar definitions. This one is opposite of, and this one means no. So those means no. And this, uh, tell me. Ah, yeah, it can be, it can be. But here there's another one that best fits agree. 
So it's not agree. To give you a hint, is bird, bird like the animal, but here bird is not the animal. Bird is an action that means to endure, to resist, to hold. This is the meaning of bird. So now that you have the hint, let's try to build this one. And we're not using any of those suffixes. We are using er because it's oh no for b for b we're gonna use er. For this one, no. We're gonna use one of these. Let me see. The answer for the first one is unbearable. Unbearable. No, able to endure. And because it's an adjective, we use able. This one is for adverbs, this one is for adjectives. Unbearable. The answer for the first one. And another hint for letter B, you're gonna use the R. The R, no L Y or able, because we are talking about a person who refuses to accept something as true. Work this exercise for five minutes, and then we're gonna see what your answers are. Five minutes, please. Can you resume this? Anyone who wants to tell me what do you think it goes in B? One who refuses to accept something as true. Ideas, ideas. Joshua, what do you think? One who refuses to accept something as true. Is this or on? What do you think? Someone who doesn't accept things is someone who. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Believe. Disbelieve or unbelieve? Unbelieve. Sure. Believable or unbelievable. Uh, no, right? In this one, we're going to use R. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, because it's a person who It's a disbeliever. 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 Disbeliever is someone who refused to accept something as true. It's an anti anti believer, <laughs> like the ones who who are fans of Justin Bieber believers. But those are disbelievers. I am a disbeliever. Okay, then not friendly, unkind in disposition. What do you think? I think it's unfriendly. Yes, it is. Unfriendly. When you are unfriendly, it means not friendly, unkind in disposition. Good. Contrary to one's taste or liking. Is it agree or is it time? Um, disagree. Disagree, and we need one suffix. Um, disagree. Disagree. Disagreeable. Ah, yeah, exactly. Disagreeable. So you see, those adjectives that ends in able are kind of tough to pronounce. Disagreeable. Agreeable. And the last one here is not occurring at a suitable time or season. This is the only good word that is left. Is this timely, this timeable, untimely, or untimeable? Hmm, difficult decision we have here. Jose, what do you think? Do you have a few choices? This time, on time, timely, or timeable?
I'm going to be a good teacher to you is untimely, untimely, untimely. So there you have the answers, unbearable, disbeliever, unfriendly, disagreeable, and untimely. This exercise is more relaxed. Read the excerpts from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and find the words with suffix. We have to identify the words with suffixes. I collected the instruments of life around me. Which words contain suffixes? Anyone at home? I collected the instruments of life around me. It can be instruments. The letter S. Uh -huh, yes, and it's missing another. Instruments is one, letter S. There is another. Maybe the inflection of a verb. Uh, collected. Yay, B. Now let's move to the next phrase, which I might infuse a spark of being into the lifeless thing that laid at my feet. What did you say? A being is one. ING. Being. This is one suffix. ING. Running, swimming, being. Another? Less. Less yourself, right, Jose? Yes, less. Less and being. Now in letter B. The different accidents of life are not so changeable as the feelings of human nature. Guys at home? Um, accident and changeable. Yay, it's missing one. Feelings? Aha, uh -huh, yes, there's another S. Good, good observation. We have three, S, able, and S. And the last one, but now that I have finished, the beauty of the dream vanished. Uh -huh, yes, Josue, finished. And? Yay, vanished. And breathless horror and disgust fill my heart. Uh -huh, yes, less. Feel it? Uh -huh. Yes, ED. Good, that was easy. So now let's finish watching the video of this famous YouTuber. Well, not that famous. We have uh, some suffixes, prefixes, meanings, and examples. Uh, it's meaning and sample words. Now it is time for some suffixes. And but this part is kind of boring, but let me tell you that it is very useful at the same time because next time that you come across with a word that you don't know, uh, you just gotta remember the suffix or prefix meaning and you will get it without looking up on Google or in a dictionary. Uh, the first suffix is ASI and it means a state or quality. And you can find it in words like privacy, fallacy, delicacy. Then you have dumb. It means place or a state of being. As in freedom, kingdom, boredom. Then you have T, quality of. Inactivity, veracity, parity, serenity. Then you have meant is condition of. You can find it in words like argument, endorsement, punishment. Ness, a state of being. In, you can find it in heaviness, sadness, rudeness, destiness. Ship, position held. Fellowship, ownership, kinship, internship. Shun, a state of being. You can find it in concession, transition, abbreviation. Then you have able, which means capable of being, 
edible, presentable, abominable, and credible. All pertaining to. You can find it in regional, grammatical, emotional, and coastal. Full, notable for, fanciful, resentful, woeful, doubtful. Pose, characterized by, nutritious, portentous, studious. Ish, having the quality of, thinish, childish, and snobbish. And the last one, and we have seen an example before, is less, is without. You can find it in endless, ageless, lowless, and effortless. Now it is the chance for prefixes. Again, we have the prefix, its meaning, and some examples. We have a, an, they mean uh, without, lack of, not. And they can be found in words like a moral, a cellular, a this, a chromatic, and anhedrious. Then we have anti, it means against or opposite of, anticlimax, anti aircraft, antiseptic, and antibody. Then auto means self and say or same. You can find it in autopilot, autobiography, automobile, autofocus. Then we have co means with or together and can be found in words like co-pilot, co-worker, co-exist, co-author. Then we have com and con means together and with. And you can find it in companion, commingle, contact, concentrate. Then you have contra or contro, they mean against, opposite. You can find it in contradict, contrast, contrary, controversy. Then you have D, it means down, off, away from, and can be found in words like devalue, deactivate, debug, and degrade. Then we have prefix this. It means not, apart, away. And it's in words like disappear, disagreeable, disbar, dissect. You have N. It means put into or covered with. And you can find it in words like enclose, entangle, enslave, encase. X, out of, from, former, extract, exhale, excavate and ex president. Then you have extra means beyond, outside, more than, extracurricular, extramodular, extravagant. Then we have hetero, different or other, heterosexual, heterodox, heterogeneous, homo, homeo, same or alike. You can find it in words like homonym, homophone, homeostasis, or homosexual. Hyper, over, more, beyond. Hyperactive, hypersensitive, hypercritical. And finally, we have ill, im, in, ear. All of them mean not or without. And you can find it in words like illegal, immoral, inconsiderate and irresponsible. So uh, this is the end of the lesson. If you have more questions, now we have... This is the end of the video for you. And I hope that you will learn some more about uh, prefixes, affixes and root words. Um, we're gonna stop the class here and we're gonna